Hello and welcome to this day in history for January 13th. January 13th is the 13th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 352 days remaining to the end of the year, except for leap years when there's 353 days remaining to the end of the year. This week we're looking at words that have multiple meanings and today's word is scalf. Scalf is a noun that means a splinter, a tiny amount of something, a thin or slight person, or an annoying or troublesome person. <laughs> the etymology of this word is probably from Middle Low German or obsolete Dutch scalf, which means flake, splinter, or scale. The earliest documented use of this word is 1610. Before we go on, I want to remind you that links to my research are included in the show notes and encourage you to smash that like button. Don't forget to click the little bell so you can get notifications when videos come out. Share this around and let me know what you think in the comments section. And with that, we're going to start in the year 1128 when the Pope recognized the Knights Templar. On January 13, 1128, Pope Honorius II granted a papal sanction to the military order known as the Knights Templar, declaring it to be the army of God. In 1807, Union General Napoleon Bonaparte Buford was born in Woodford, Kentucky. In 1842, Dr. William Bryden, an assistant surgeon in the General East India Company Army during the First Anglo-Afghan War, became famous for being the sole survivor of an army of 4,500 men and 12,000 camp followers when he reached the safety of a garrison in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. So this sort of thing's been going on for a long time. In 1885, Canadian-American businessman Alfred Fuller, who founded the Fuller Brush Company, Alfred was born on this day in 1885. He lived to the age of 88. And by the way, if you happen to be old enough to remember Fuller Brushes and you're wondering whatever happened to them. They were acquired by Consolidated Foods in 1968 and changed hands several times since then and is currently owned by the Galaxy Brush Company LLC in Lakewood, New Jersey. On this day in 1888, the National Geographic Society was founded in Washington, D.C. On this day in 1910, the birth of public radio took place with a live performance of the opera's Cavalleria Rusticana and Pagliacci as they went out over the airwaves from the Metropolitan Opera House in New York. On this day in 1919, American actor Robert Stack was born. You might remember him from the series Unsolved Mysteries. He died in 2003 at the age of 84. On this day in 1929, Wyatt Earp died in Los Angeles. Nearly 50 years after the famous gunfight at the OK Corral, Wyatt Earp died quietly in Los Angeles at the age of 80. On this day in 1939, a fellow named Doc Barker was killed by prison guards as he attempted to escape from Alcatraz Prison in San Francisco Bay. He was a member of the notorious Bloody Barker's Gang. Also in 1939, the Black Friday brush fires burned 20,000 square kilometers of land in Australia, claiming the lives of 71 people. On this day in 1941, the author James Joyce died in Zurich, Switzerland at the age of 58. On this day in 1950, Soviets boycotted the United Nations Security Council. For the second time in a week, Jacob Malik, the Soviet representative to the United Nations, stormed out of a meeting of the Security Council, this time in reaction to the defeat of his proposal to expel the nationalist Chinese representative. Ernie Kovacs was a comedian who hosted his own television shows during the 1950s, and is said to have influenced such TV hosts as Johnny Carson and David Letterman. I believe that. <laughs> but on this day in 1962, Ernie died in a car crash. Crashed his Chevrolet Corvair into a telephone pole in Los Angeles. He was 42. On this day in 1966, Lyndon Johnson appointed the first African-American cabinet member. That would be Robert C. Weaver, who was appointed head of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the agency that develops and implements national housing policy and enforces fair housing laws. 
On this day in 1968, Johnny Cash performed at Folsom Prison. In the midst of depression and a steep decline in his musical career, legendary country singer Johnny Cash arrived to play for inmates at California's Folsom Prison on January 13, 1968. The concert and subsequent live album launched him back into the charts and redefined his career. On this day in 1978, the United States Food and Drug Administration began requiring all blood donations to be labeled paid or volunteer donors. On this day in 1990, Douglas Wilder became the first elected African-American governor as he took office as governor of Virginia and Richmond, Virginia. And on this day in 1999, Michael Jordan retired for a second time. And I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video and share your thoughts in the comment section. While you're here, check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.